I think it's absolutely crucial that we have critical media literacy in this world because the media is one of the most powerful tools and forces in our society and it shapes the way we understand everything. And unfortunately, there is so little media literacy out there right now. An example of this is a Stanford University study, which showed that only a quarter of students studied, recognized and explained the significance of a blue check mark on social media. And over 30 percent of students uh, argued that a fake account was more trustworthy because of some key graphical elements that they included in the study. Moreover, more than 80 percent of these students believe that uh, native advertisements identified by the word sponsored content underneath was a real news story. So that suggests that even digital natives have an absolutely perilous task online trying to differentiate fact and fiction and what is truthful, honest reporting and what is editorials, advertorials and uh, deceitful sponsored content. We, we really are, especially now we are all living our, our lives online in this massive new world full of powerful forces that people just don't understand according to the surveys and the polls. And that's why we really have a huge need for cre uh, critical media literacy right now. So people can be in their own driver's seats deciding how and where they get information and deciding whom uh, they can trust and who they cannot trust. And that's the reason I think it's so important that we have to teach people how to think critically rather than what to think. What I mean by that is we need to teach them how to analyze sources and give them uh, a lot of options on where to look so that they have a very broad understanding of what's out there. We want to broaden people's media habits, not uh, constrict them. Um, and media trust uh, across the West, but particularly in the United States, has been falling for decades. In the United States, it's been steadily falling since the 1970s, to the point where only 32% of the population now says that they have a great deal or even a fair amount of confidence that the media reports the news in full and in a fair and accurate way. So we're really at an all-time nadir in terms of uh, trust in the media. That is really where we are. We're at a crisis point, and critical media literacy can be a way out of that. I do think independent media is enormously important. A truly independent alternative media, free of the massive biases that come in from uh, government ownership or corporate sponsorship or ownership of uh, the outlets is absolutely crucial. And all you have to do is check to see how alternative media covers different sources and different topics and compare it with establishment media. You can do that, for instance, by looking at Project Censor's top 25 list of most censored stories every year. So often, the ones that make it there, they are covered by small independent outlets with relatively few resources. And yet the establishment media just completely ignores them. And it's because there are structural factors which completely prevent establishment media from covering certain topics properly in a way. Maybe they'll touch on it, but they won't actually give people the sort of information that is desperately needed to create a better, healthier society. And very often the best journalists in the United States start their careers in establishment media, but are essentially hounded out of that profession and forced into the margins. Just take one example, Chris Hedges, for example, he was a Middle Eastern bureau chief for the United States. Uh, for, excuse me, for the New York Times for many years. But after he criticized the United States invasion of the Iraq war in 2003, he was essentially forced out of his position. And from there, he traveled the wilderness for many years and is still doing so, working in foreign media outlets or trying to work in very niche, small websites like Truth, uh, like Truthdig, which uh, to the, I mean, I, I really think Truthdig was a great website, but not that many people are, were reading it. And so we really have a terrible situation here when journalists calling out one of the greatest crimes of the 21st century, if they do so, they are kicked out of the profession and marginalized for the rest of their career. Um, a truly independent media, unfortunately, very often we don't have very much money because we don't have billionaire backers or governmental uh, assistance. That's because those sorts of people really don't want uh, the system that they benefit from being scrutinized too much. So we are really being deliberately starved of funding. 
But we really do need this. And when I say we, I don't just mean journalists, I mean everyone in society, because corporate media is really the mouthpiece of corporate America. They always make sure to present news in a way that is favorable for corporate shareholders and advertisers. But the big news of the day rarely makes them look good. And so we are left with a sort of fettered, mothballed uh, media, which only covers the most important topics in a very surface level way, uh, leading to a complete lack of understanding of some of the most important topics uh, in society. Likewise, we need to hold the government to account. And very often, alternative media can do that much better than uh, establishment media, which relies on things like access, journalism, uh, and the connections to the uh, powerful people, connections that alternative media pretty much as a rule do not have. And so in short, I think we need a media that is beholden to their readers and not to billionaire owners or backers or the state. And that's really the absolute fundamental pressing need right now in society in terms of the media. We need an alternative media which will uh, which will cover things for the people and in a way that actually represents people and not big businesses or big governments. Yeah, I guess if you've been paying attention to how the media has covered Israel and Palestine for the last 50 years or more, you probably won't be surprised how they're covering right now, but you still could be shocked at just how openly supporting they are for what is going on there, which really constitutes a genocide right now. So I think we really need <clears throat> uh, alternative media talking to people over there, calling a spade a spade and calling out what is actually going on. And really, if you just look at one article in high quality alternative media that's really focusing on the Middle East, outlets like Middle East Eye, Mondo Weiss, Electronic Intifada or Mint Press News, you will find out things in there that in any of these articles that you will never, ever learn, even if you spend months or even years consuming the entirety of the US corporate media. And that's what we're really trying to do at Mint Press. And I'm sure uh, the others that I mentioned would say the same. We're trying to get out stories that have been deliberately ignored by the establishment media. And there's really not many places where you can go, for example, to watch an in-depth interview with one of the leaders of Yemen's Ansar al-Allah, uh, also known as the Houthis, except Min Press News. I'm certainly not saying that they're correct or anything, or that, that their worldview is perfect or even good, but the point is, is that that viewpoint is pretty much entirely absent in, uh, in US corporate media. And it's very important to know what the key characters in uh, these, uh, these conflicts actually think. We at Min Press are a small, relatively penniless uh, team of uh, people who are committed to covering the Middle East in a more fair, accurate uh, uh, viewpoint from an anti-war standpoint, but our reach is really limited. And by limited, I mean that both in an active and a passive sense. Limited in the fact that we don't have the reach of a New York Times or a Fox News or a BBC or whatever, but also limited in a much more active way, meaning that we are being deliberately throttled by social media companies who have close ties to both the US and Israeli governments. And so our videos on YouTube will be demonetized. Uh, we will not come up uh, very high in search results on Google or other search engines and Facebook and other social media platforms often find reasons to uh, suspend us for no real reason at all. And so it's very hard actually to get the message out, but we are finding that when we do reach people, uh, they are very receptive to it because I think Ultimately, even if you're not paying a lot of attention to this, people have inbuilt bullshit meters and they know something is up. And so when they do, uh, when they do actually come across some sort of alternative opinion, they tend to understand and really engage with that really well. Critical media literacy is absolutely essential for a functioning society as it really empowers people to make decisions for themselves and critically evaluate what they see, read, and hear. Socrates once said that an unexamined life is not worth living, and I think really an unexamined text is not worth reading either, meaning that if you're not critically scrutinizing what you're actually uh, ingesting in terms of uh, your media diet, then you will just be 
swilling ideology and uh, just uh, completely awash in a sea of propaganda. People really need to be uh, their own protagonists. They need to be in their driver's seat. They need to be well-educated uh, because ultimately an educated, informed populace is the centerpiece for any functioning democracy. And without it, I don't really think we can talk about countries being democracies if we have populations who are deliberately being silenced or kept out of the loop for any sorts of uh, important issues. So critical media literacy really should, at its best, empower people to critically evaluate, scrutinize and challenge what they hear from politicians, from bosses or from any other sources of power. And it should help them uh, organize and uh, build towards a better world. And that's really what everybody in the sort of critical pedagogy movement really wants. Critical pedagogy educators uh, say that they really want to encourage learners to examine power structures and patterns of inequality through awakening critical consciousness in the pursuit of emancipation from oppression. And in that sense, it really is an emancipatory ideology because without understanding the world as it really is, we're really all hamstrung and shackled. And that's really where critical media literacy can come in. It's vital, as I said, to scrutinize what we see, read and hear because so much of what we know about life, particularly about uh, foreign issues and foreign policy comes mediated through these gigantic news corporations. And media is not our friend. In general, the media that we know and perhaps don't love are gigantic international corporations with um, very real and specific goals and interests. The Armenian-American media scholar Ben Bagdikian once said that uh, there's no greater force in shaping public understanding about what is true and what is false, what is real and what is fake, and what is possible and what is impossible for a society to do. And so therefore, it's absolutely crucial that we start really critically evaluating what we are ingesting. Now, it's okay, I think, if media reform or media literacy is not your number one issue as an activist, but as Mickey Huff says, it had better be your number two, because otherwise no one will ever hear what you've got to say. And so, in short, if we ever want to change society for the better, we need to really start by critically evaluating our media and by changing it.